actually be frozen and we haven't even done anything <laughs> yet. Okay, there we go. Right. Um, we'll we'll see what happens with it. Yeah. Look at us, all uh, all geometrical there. <laughs> what? What is speak speak for yourself I with you. I have stripes and you have little what are they boxes kind of things. Boxes. Excuse me. Do you have any shirts with boxes on? Them? <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. What do you call that? I don't know. Cross pattern, perhaps. Tartan. <laughs> sort A of tartan shirt. Sort of light fake tartan. Yeah. Um, something like that. Something cro cross hatched. <laughs> For curves. Because they, so they should probably they should probably should be straight, but I would have to yes, have but... a straight body to have straight lines. So. You, you don't want you can't because of your breasts. It's always going to dip down one way or the other. Anyway, dip down. It's always it's that's going to dip down talk, one way or the other. That's not how you talk about breasts. <laughs> sag, sag, <laughs> drop, fall, droop, droop. <laughs> um, they can they can do all of those things without much uh, without much Work. effort. <laughs> Without much effort. Hey, look at that. When I tag oh people God. on Facebook, right? We didn't even start. When, when, I, when I tag you. are really embarrassing. Are you crying? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> you tag people, yeah. Look, I tag someone and, yeah. it, and it, it changed the person's name into um, a, a, at sign one million and five number or something, blah, something. blah, blah. What, what, what does that mean? That's I don't know. Very strange. It just looks like you've been. Uh, Taking some medications when you're okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to introduce um, slightly late in the year, but um, the world's worst Halloween mask. Now, um, for people watching the video online, what you can see is a uh, is it like a like a head scarf with a giant eyeball <laughs> with teeth at the bottom of it across the front. Now. If, it's, this, it's something seriously wrong. This with wouldn't this be mask. so disturbing. What, what, what the problem is that this mask has been made for a cyclop because it oh. only has one hole in well, the middle. Well, that, that's how are you supposed to see anything out of this if you've got two eyes? It's, it's, it's beyond me. You're supposed to be a cyclop. You're supposed to just walk around blind. Maybe you're supposed to stick your tongue out the middle part. I'm not quite sure. It's like a, it's just the, the head mask is just one giant eyeball. Which is just a bit, bit freaky. What's even scarier it's is that. It's supposed to be disturbing. I mean, it's a Halloween mask. How did this end up here? Well, we wanted a scary mask for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> and we liked this one. It's pretty, pretty freaky, actually. Um, yeah. The freakiest thing about it is that you can't actually wear it. It's, uh, it's just so completely impractical. Um, it is. Well, look at those teeth. What are teeth? Teeth like at teeth. the bottom of the eyeball. Yeah, but they're so realistic. <laughs> no, I mean, look at that. Oh, why don't you just why don't you just the cut them out and stick them in then? They've got the colour of fangs with fresh blood. Look at that. Yeah, but he doesn't go to the dentist very much. Well, I think anyway. he does. Just look, look at that. Really, anyway, anyway, really that's the world's worst Halloween mask. There we go. Dude, it done. Away with that. Away with that. Apparently, you were bored by the topics. Last time, were you bored? Were you bored? I wasn't bored. I was interested, but it isn't it isn't something that I can that I can get over excited about? You know, I mean, it's your what? it was your topic. It was something that you you rant about. <laughs> I did. I did. Have a <laughs> so, ah, okay. You know, okay. it's a, it's it's your rant kind of thing. So, what floats your boat then? I've got I've got a, it's like a it's painful here. No, no, I'm talking about parenting. I'm not talking about physical points of pain on your body. Just give me a little massage there. What? A little massage? Like if there. I stick my finger in there, in your back, is that okay? Really? Is that, that, that's okay, is but that... I don't think it's going to help long term. I'm not really... What? No, it's like going to help at it's all like if a... I stick my finger in there. What is it? It's like a hinge or something. Hinge? <laughs> excuse, excuse me. <laughs> Doctor, my back is not hinging properly. <laughs> hinge. My hinge hurts. There are the, you've got hinge, hinge joints. You've got hinges at the back. <laughs> you Who know, made you? Where oh your, um, what, what do you call them? Ribs. <laughs> your ribs? When your ribs attach to your back, you've got hinges there, but joints, right? 
<laughs> and when you breathe, <laughs> local hardware shop and <laughs> pick up a couple of extra pieces. Yeah, and when you breathe, yeah, they like come apart in the front, and they they like hinge back at the back like that, right? So, what? What are you doing? I was looking for the mask because obviously it belongs to you. <laughs> and it feels like one of my hinges is hurting. It's, it's pretty one of one of one of your hinges. Yeah. You probably need to hang. <laughs> probably. I need to hang my hinges. Something like that, yes. You hang like the bird feeder out there. It's a nice bird feeder. But it bugs me because you didn't put it in the middle. Well, I did actually. I could put it in the middle of the... Oh, did it fly? Did it fly over to the side? Did it? <laughs> Shut up, look. Can you see the thing that it's hanging on the bar? Yeah. The, it's the... exactly in the middle of the bar. Oh, no. It's not my fault that the bar is not in the middle of the balcony. <laughs> you put it right? in the middle of the bar, but didn't... Yeah check to see if it was in the middle of anything Well, I else. did check to see, but I couldn't be bothered moving it. Because that would have been too complicated. Well, actually, to yes. Slide it along. Well, it's difficult to slide because the, because the bar is cracked, it's broken multiple places, and the string gets stuck in those places. Multiple places? Yes. <laughs> like your back? Yeah, no, my back is only broken in one hinge. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it is actually quite difficult to me. You have to, you actually have to untie it and retie it. Oh no! Oh, call the cops. Um, as you do. I'll call you. Mm. It's your job. You love untying things and untangling them. And I can't. I can't like untie. That. I can't untie anything. I can't That's even untie true. my tie. You can't even untie his shoelaces. Seriously, people. They're weird. He comes to me with his shoe in his hands and says, "Can you please untie my knot?" It just knotted itself. I tried to untie it, and it's it like double knots itself know? on itself. I don't know. It's um, yeah. It's obviously in, it's obviously not designed for for Men. For, for practical <laughs> practical use at all. It's good that it doesn't come undone, but no, un ever. <laughs> ever ever. Hint, hence a small problem. Yeah, and then it takes me like half a nanosecond to untie it. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I've, I've suddenly got a very itchy nose, and it's suddenly become blocked. I suddenly can't breathe through it. I suddenly want to sneeze. Why is that? Why has that happened? I think you're allergic to uh, the the thing, the lie. Everything has been perfectly fine, and I hit record, and then suddenly. Everything Every, happens. You need a tissue. Everything happens at once. Sora, well, can you get a tissue for Daddy O, please? Um, I don't know if I need a tissue, but it might be practical to have one. Yeah. Oh, Jazzy oh. wants to help now. Oh dear, it's a race. It's, it's a race. It's going to be a fight. <laughs> they both want to help. The race turns into a fight. Oh, okay. Well, we, oh. we. I have noticed you, that when you were testing the. Uh, Thank you. Oh, look. oh, we got two. Ooh, come on, Jazzy. Give it to Daddy. He needs cool. yours too. Please. Please. Can I have it? Please, Jazzy, can we have a tissue? No, I don't think we're going to get beyond that phase. Okay. <laughs> Which... Yeah, when you, were, when you were testing. But thank you. Anyway, we really appreciate it. Testing the systems yesterday. Uh... Okay, do you want to swap? Well, if you don't want that one, you can give that one to me. Okay. When you were testing the systems yesterday, I have noticed in the video that you were touching your nose constantly. It looked like a, it looked like some kind of a, you know, person who sniffs glue or something. <laughs> I was constantly playing with my nose. Yeah. Kept touching your nose. I've never, I haven't noticed that before. Oh, it's very interesting. I you were dancing listen. around kind of a lot. You're like, yeah, yeah, and then and then you just kept touching your nose. What do you want me to do? Just like stand and fall asleep? It's called it's called putting energy into things. Yeah, and I know. I understood of, that. It I says the person understood. who didn't put energy into the last conversation. Oh my God! I didn't put energy in one of our conversations. Are you just going to like reproach me about it for like the next three years? You remember the time when you didn't put any energy into the conversation? You, 20 years ago. What's well, the pointless asking you I if mean, you remember anything, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so we have a completely natural reaction. You don't understand down that way.
way. It's it's nearing my time. Just start down that way. I didn't start down anyway. It's nearing my time of the month, darling. Is it? Do you don't want to get me going? No. No. Okay. Because I won't stop. Because <laughs> once I start going downhill, I won't stop. I don't have the brakes. Yeah. <laughs> Snow snowball headed for hell. Right. <laughs> Taking everybody with me. <laughs> <laughs> An avalanche. <laughs> Yeah. Started hmm. as a snow snowball, ended up as an avalanche. Yeah. Anyway, it's hormonal. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> can't do anything about that. <laughs> Moving on. Apparently, I have heard that it's like a, it's like a psychological cleanse. You know, like um, like the 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 psychology. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I wasn't sure where to put the stress in that one. <laughs> is that, that a woman's psychology kind of tunes in with the human body, and when the body of the human, of the woman, <laughs> when the body of the that is your mask over there, isn't it? <laughs> of the human woman cleanses, so so cleanses the psychology of of all the tension that has been you know stored in during the month, all all the aggression. Uh, all frustration, everything that you've been suppressing, right? It all just comes out, just like you know, like it, it's in balance with the rest of the woman thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, shall I go away for a few days then? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Give you give you a little bit of space to get all that out. Take and, the kids. Uh, take the kids. <laughs> I'm sure they'd love that. Mm. They love the they, they love the, the freedom they get with me. Sit in the corner over there. Don't move. Sit Don't. in your hands. <laughs> I have to say that. Stop wiggling. <laughs> Stop running up and down, jumping and everything. Why are you doing a handstand on the couch? Oh, okay. During lunch. Yes. <laughs> yes. The plate balancing <laughs> on your left toe. When we have a conversation, can you stand in one place? <laughs> Rather, no. rather than running no. from side to side. No, no. Well, Will is a boy. Okay, boys are boys are kinetic. I mean, it's evolutionary, right? I mean, they're hunters. They have to have more energy. They have to be all over the freaking place. So it's normal. He is ev evolutionary. Okay, he is supposed to spend his childhood practicing skills for adulthood. Okay. And if he, <laughs> so that's what all the as an adult, is. has to give out a lot of physical effort, has to be strong, has to be fast to catch whoa, the bloody whoa, mammoth. Whoa, 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 whoa. Said the person who just said, "Why were you? Why were you moving around while you were doing the?" the yeah, but you're an adult; you can control yourself. Anyway, so because he has to. <laughs> Sorry, please continue. I'll just. Um, he I'm has to practice those skills in childhood. That's why boys naturally tend to be more energetic, tend to be more physical, more kinetic, because they're practicing their hunting skills. They have to run and jump and, and kill things, and you know, because they're, they're just. They're out there. They have to practice fighting, they have to practice their, their alpha male things stands and you know their dominance and and everything so uh william what do you think you're doing I'm practicing my fighting skills sir <laughs> um so they have to do that they have, and 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 on top of that will is the kinetic kind of learner as well he has to fidget doing everything Fidget. He he hit. There's not two seconds that pass yeah. without a fidget. He has to fidget or walk around or jump around. When I used to read stories to him, when he was like four or five years old. He'd be all over the place, all over the freaking room. He's running up and down, jumping off the bed. And I was like, Are you even listening? Well, yes, I'm listening. He was listening to every single word, but he couldn't listen and focus on the story while sitting down. He could only focus on the story while running around. Okay. So that's just the way he works. Why isn't that in those learning styles? <laughs> it is. Is it? It's a kinetic learning style. Yeah, it's it's for the kids who learn alphabet while throwing a ball. You know, it's it's the 
Uh, yeah, that's you know they 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 learn mathematics by by doing steps, counting their steps, you know, making them forwards, backwards, um, things like that. So it is actually, you know, they need a fidget toy in their hands while they're doing something. How come? The, how come the the fidget spinner is not interesting for him? Then? So is it, it is, but you told him to put it down about five times because you can stand the sound. No, I didn't tell him to put it down because I couldn't stand the sound. That's ridiculous. Well, I don't know what the you sound stand, is, but... The sound is not a problem. <laughs> but he it doesn't was, make any sound. He was playing with it and he was like, well, if you don't put it down right now, I'm going to jump out of the window or something like that. So he doesn't just, like, fidget with it and spin it around. He's like, and he's always doing it right in front of my face. So he could do it anywhere at any <laughs> point in time. Right? Yeah, well, that's where the guidance comes. So, there we know, go. You can fidget, but do it over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, directing them into a corner. Yeah, I was wondering if if I had a little bit of that in me, because when I was at school, anytime I had to I had to talk about something, I would gesture wildly around me, right? Did anybody get hurt? Or I would like jump up and down and do things. I would, uh, you know, touching myself. <laughs> I once, I was like 18. That yank is really weird. <laughs> She's either punching the air or touching herself. I was 18 and I was supposed to have this uh, speech, right? We were practicing speeches at school. And I was supposed to talk about something I was uh, passionate about, and informative, so I was talking about art, right? And when I was standing there, I kept doing this, right? I kept, when I was talking, I just kept touching my heart like that. It's not really, it's not really okay, where your well, heart is. Okay, I couldn't is, touch my boobs, right? So, I, I just kept touching my two hands. <laughs> and the um, the so, teacher told me about that afterwards. She's like, you kept touching touching yourself like that, and I I thought that you were reading your notes while you were doing that. There's a, there's a, <laughs> you got a piece of lettuce. There's on a piece of lettuce stuck to that's the bottom. That's a bonus. Bottom, bottom that's uh, that's a bonus. That I put it there because I didn't have a biscuit. <laughs> I would rather have had a biscuit. I know. But we don't have any biscuits. You know, so you you know how I, find, I, I only discovered that because I, I could see the bottom of the cup in, <laughs> when you were drinking. in, in, in the, the Facebook video when I, when I was drinking. I was like, oh, it's stuck to the bottom. Something stuck to the bottom of my cup. Where? We should do that. <laughs> Will will do that. <laughs> okay, you. everybody, have a look on the bottom of your cup. Oops. There's, there's one ball in every minute. Mm. Yeah. So. Anyhow, we wanted to go straight into it last time, right? <laughs> this time. Yeah, this time. We so, hi do, everybody. We Welcome to the uh, Practical Parenting. I'm sorry, I'm just taking over today. Welcome to the Practical Parenting with Graham, called G, and <laughs> Yanka, called me. Uh, yeah, what do you today, how do you say Graham? How do you say Graham? <laughs> Graham. 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 Uh, like 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 some kind of turkey being <laughs> choked. <laughs> well, no, it's not my fault. You've got such a name. Sorry. It's a boring name that my parents chose. So they could have, they could have chose chose. Says the English teacher. They could have chosen. They could they could have chosen anything. They could have chosen Enkelbert. Or Mahatma. Mahat, yeah, <laughs> you know they could have done anything. Mahatma Court, please. So uh, yeah. anything at all, yeah. basically. Yeah. So and you, Graham. Bo boring. It could, it could, it could boring. Have been, uh, what's this guy's name? The the ugly face. Um. <laughs> well, that narrows it down. <laughs> Hamish. You <laughs> could have been what? called Hamish. Hamish. I, I, Macbeth. <laughs> Oh, the actor, Robert Carlyle. Yeah. You think he's ugly? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't think he was ugly. But oh, he's not, well, okay. It's not, it's not exactly Oh, he's not ugly, he's just Scottish. Okay, Canada. I get it. Probably. <laughs> he's very Scottish, actually. Fair enough. Okay, that's no, it. No, he's got, he's got a certain kind of charm. He's got a certain kind of charm, but it's not, he's not that, he's not the Bruce Willis kind of good-looking guy. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis mm -hmm. looks like a 
bald headed eagle. Oh, Bruce Willis is. He must be hot. 500 years old <laughs> by know. now. Yeah. When he was young, he was hot. When I was young, he was old. <laughs> now I'm old. When he was young, he was still bald. But this guy bizarre. He's like, it's like he's been bald ever since he was born, right? Something like that. I think he's one of those actors who's like, let's let's make this as practical as possible. I'm just going to go around with a shaved head. Yeah. There you go. No, no, he's very he's very attractive. Much better than uh, Robert Carlyle. I had a crush on him when I was about Bruce Willis. fifteen. Yeah, and it never went From, away. <laughs> what films did you see him in? Uh, something silly. Wait. Um, uh, the one with the alien. What was it called? Armageddon. Uh -uh. Nope. Um, I've seen Armageddon as well, but Six Sense. Uh, I. How do I know all this? Um, Fifth Element. Yes, that one. That one. That's when my all of those crush films started. kind of blend into the same film. <laughs> yeah, I can't no. remember. Any, I've seen all of them. I've between. seen all of them, but I think the Fifth Element was the first one, and I've seen. Could have been. Um, it always amuses me when I see the Die Hard film grouped in as best Christmas movies ever. <laughs> Top 10 best Christmas movies ever. Oh, it is. Die good. Hard. It is a great movie, yeah. Yeah, it's not really a Christmas film, though, is it? Mm. It's just about terrorists and like people, shooting each, <laughs> people shooting each other and, mm -hmm. and, and other kinds of nonsense. Yeah? yeah? Cool. Yeah, he's good. Well, every role that he ever played was the same character. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's just yeah. he's a cop, or he's a CIA agent, or he works for the FBI, or he's an ex-cop, or he's uh... yeah, he's that he's that he's that kind of tough, hard but charming and funny, and then and sometimes accidentally and surprisingly. Uh, Gentle and like a gentle. like a concrete teddy bear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like a concrete teddy bear. Yeah. <laughs> With you. no hair. Oh, she has no. Jasmine, Jazzy, can you can you go and get this toilet roll back to Zora because she needs to wipe her bottom. Bottom. Can you oh. do that, please? That would be very cool. Super cool. Take this. Take it to Zora. She's sitting on the loo. Go. Go save her. Go. Save the day. Jazzy saves the day. Once again. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. We're moving on to something completely different. Okay. We are going to go See, I can come alive when talking about something interesting. Bruce Willis. Like Bruce Willis. <laughs> if the conversation ever, ever drops or gets boring, I'm just going to say, Bruce Willis. Ding. And, and, <laughs> Thank you. Jazzy saved the day. Thank you, Jazz. And once again. Super sweet. Yeah, right. so, uh, yeah, hello and welcome. And <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about some uh, core let's, values. Let's talk about core values in parenting. Now, yeah. to, to find the core value, we have to look at what is behind the mask. Yeah. What mask? Um, it's not a mask you're wearing. No. But that, that, the other thing is a mask. Oh, okay. This is my real thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's not bad. Oh. It needs a bit of work, but... <laughs> anyway. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, to understand why you have the values that you have in the present, you have to take a step back <clears throat> and, and examine how those values formed and from where those values came. Well, they're usually ingrained in us by our parents, aren't they? Well, we take some of our values from our parents, but we also have to upgrade and improve our values. And there are some values that we don't want to have from our parents. So we, we choose to reject some values as well. So um, it should be different for different people, although we can all ask ourselves the same types of questions to, uh, to get deeper into the information. So what I thought I'd do is go through some of the questions with you, um, little Miss Guinea Pig, today. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
sorry, I was just thinking about trivial pursuit questions for a I, second. I there. saw how you were thinking. I was, it was yeah, I was visible. I was because I, I mentioned. Um, it's a cold stony. I mentioned guinea pig, and <laughs> the word the word pig reminded me of the question about truffles yeah. today, and I was thinking pig truffles. Why am I thinking about truffles and pigs? Okay, I was confused. Yeah, there was a question like what animals used to look, look for truffles, and I knew the answer because I watched Huey, Dewey, and Louie when I was a kid. And they had a pig in one in one of this in one of the episodes. Not your neighbors. And there were, <laughs> and the pig was looking for truffles. Yeah. Yeah. So I remembered. Yeah. It's amazing what you can pick up from Huey, Dewey, and Louie. <laughs> I know. It's not. Isn't that amazing? And yeah. and they dressed the pig up like a baby because uh, th there was an area where no pigs were allowed. You you remember this? You yeah. Actually, remember <laughs> all of this. It's crazy. I must have been about eight when I watched it. Well, I guess, what did I guess? I guess the badger is what they used to yeah, say. Yeah, I can't imagine anybody taming a badger. And, you know, like, search, search, no. <laughs> you know, have him on a little leash or something. What, what do badgers even exist? What are they good for? Are they good for anything at all? Badger's fat is really good for influence. Like when you've got like upper chest, you know, like bronchitis, when uh -huh. you've got chest infections. Uh -huh. Then the, uh, the the lard from a badger is really good for that. You're supposed to put some badger lard on your chest. Well, just you put a badger on my chest. Would that work? No, oh, okay. <laughs> you have to take the lard out of it first. Okay. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna like that. Anyway, um, yeah, and you heat it up and you put it on your chest and you put on like a, a cloth or something and uh, a plastic sheet and you just leave it on overnight and. Uh -huh. Was a plastic sheet and a cloth? I don't know. Badgers sure. could make a fortune from that, <laughs> couldn't they? I don't. I don't yeah. think they have it patented, though. No. 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 You go to the local pharmacy. I like three pounds of badger fat, please. Yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> you can actually get badger fat in a pharmacy in Slovakia. I imagine in UK, they probably look at me like, "Is he gonna use me?" Yeah. Like when I asked for the wild thyme herbs. <laughs> There's a woman here. She thinks that badger is an animal. <laughs> you know, pharmacists, can you have some wild thyme, please? I'm like, what? What? <laughs> what? Like, wild thyme, the, the herb for, for chest infections? And I'm like, no, no, we're Scottish. We don't understand. They were like, this is a pharmacy. <laughs> we don't sell tea. <laughs> no. And I'm like, no, no but tea. it's. tea. You have to go to a tea shop. <laughs> but it's it. a medicinal herb. Uh, we're a pharmacy, we only sell medicine. And they're like, okay, obviously. Culture shock. Because <laughs> yeah, okay. in Slovakia, you go to a pharmacy and you get herbs, right? And you get badger fat. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, any, uh, any... Speechless? <laughs> well, I, I am. I just turned on the core values. That's what... My nose is itchy now as well, it's contagious. Yes. Yeah, you have to be aware of it. If you've got some badger fat, it'll probably help you. <laughs> oh. I don't. I've got my own fat. Yeah. Doesn't help there. <laughs> Badgers, you thought? Yeah. <laughs> sure, it does. <laughs> what that means. To badger somebody. <laughs> and that doesn't mean to. Does that mean to sniff someone? No, no, no. It, 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 doesn't, it does not mean to sniff them, it does not mean to <laughs> roger them with the badger. Okay, either it just to badger somebody, to bother somebody, yeah. yes, to bother somebody, to make a problem, to annoy somebody. Okay. Stop badgering me. No, my fat doesn't badger me at all. No, <clears throat> no. no. that's my friend. He's called Jabba. Yes, well, we'll get <laughs> <laughs> we'll get we'll get into Star Wars another day. Uh, we need to get into the core value stuff, but we can't get into the core value stuff. Yes, while... just repeat. Okay. So you have to go and uh, do do your do your duty, your and duty. do your duty, and I will um, uh, talk about core values again. I'm always talking about core values and never really getting anywhere with them. Um, what's what's to say? Um, a lot of people don't have a a foundation in their their thoughts or or their beliefs or, or their ideas and if you if you don't have a foundation and you don't have a grounding you kind of drift 
in your in your in your philosophies in your ideals and expectations in life and it's also easy to be manipulated when you don't have a a firm foundation and you don't have a clear set of core values so um you know it's an interesting exercise to um sit down with a with a piece of paper and write down 10 things that you that, that you value in life in terms of your core your core principles if you, are you <laughs> you okay over there you need some help yeah are you that's <laughs> There we go. It's done. It's done. So, um, yeah. What are the what are the core principles that drive you? What are you prepared to accept? What are you not prepared to accept? And it all comes from an understanding of uh, of what you value in life. Give me a question. So we're going to dive into it right now. Question number one in uh, in our quest for core values. Um, Should you be nervous? Uh, no, you shouldn't be nervous at all, but you should just let the answers flow, okay. right, whatever comes into your head first. So, um, uh, inspirational people in your life, go. Who do you think of first when you think of inspirational people in your life? Who has inspired you? You. <laughs> stupid, stupid, sorry. <laughs> you have. <laughs> oh, you stupid inspired me. Oh. Thank you. No, you do inspire me. You inspire me. Apart from um, Bruce Willis. Then, yeah. apart from you, you inspire me because because uh, of all the positives that you are aware of about yourself, <laughs> which is the uh, what, what does that mean? The self discipline and the you know the the organization and everything and the, the tenaciousness that you just keep going. No one has ever described me as tenacious before. That's interesting. Anyway, yeah. Uh, next person who inspires me is Ines. She is very inspiring to me because she has gone from a complete and total... Ines, that's a girl, right? Yeah. Because that was a boy's name where I grew up. So. <laughs> no, she, she came from a complete and utter, like the lowest you can imagine, um, like her super personal low psychologically. Okay. Uh, she lived with badgers. Almost. <laughs> yeah. She, she, she tried to kill herself, uh, and she. <laughs> from, right. I know, and she came from a state like that into. Oh. Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> just put two and two together and resulted in. Yes, is that person? Eight, yes. 50, Fifty-six. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and she got to a place where she helps other people. She's inspiring other people. She. Mm learns amazing massive amounts of information um about psychology and depression and mm -hmm. and she puts it out there for others and i just find that awesome you know and she just fights it like every day um so she's, she's turning top, so. turning the negative into positive yeah. yes yes and she's doing great mm -hmm. Uh, other inspiring people. I mean, I'm generally inspired by. I'm inspired by our daughter who thinks the dog is a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, yeah. Uh, but I'm generally inspired by women out there um, that are turning their liabilities into their assets, basically. You know, who are changing their lives. Uh, who are taking the opportunities that they have to change their life, to to go forward, like Bea that we're going to uh, interview um, next week. Rent. Yes. Um, she was in a very tough situation as well. Or she, she was fired from from two jobs. She, she loved both of those jobs. Uh, she was really good at them. You know, she was working with the natural cosmetics. Uh, but she was probably viewed as too active, you know. Sometimes, sometimes insecure people don't like don't like to be uh, in 
presence of other people who are good at what they're doing <laughs> and passionate about what they're doing. So somebody probably felt threatened. God knows why, but uh, she got fired and she, again, was very low, but she took that opportunity and she just pursued her her own thing. And she's got a business going on now that's going to, you know, it's, got, it's going up, 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 it's going up. It's only just started, but it's already been quite successful, so that's great. Um, so people like that inspire me, you know. Another person that we're going to interview, Lucia, inspires me as well because... Um, because she does her thing as well, you know, she I'm does. I'm inspired by whatever it is that Jazz is doing. <laughs> ah, sheep and ice cream. Ice cream. She's made a sheep that and ice cream. That just fell apart, yeah. From Duplo, okay. Who is also doing what she loves. Her, her private kindergarten is something that she loves. And she's making a living out of it. Another person that inspires me is another mom who uh, started taking photographs. Well, she was on a maternity leave, Can right? you bring her a cup over there, please? Because, yes. Um... She started taking photographs when she was on a maternity leave um, with her two kids, mm -hmm. and it turned into a full-time business for her as well. You know, she's, she's, she's doing it for a living now, and she's great at it. So all these people inspire me, all these, all these little stories of these empowered moms out there who, uh, who just take control of their life. I think that's great. Okay. So... Um... This, this little person inspires me. You're an inspiration. She's standing on the table. Which is... Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall down. Stay there. Sheep. The sheep. There bah. We there we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. So we move from inspiration to, uh, to, to thinking about uh, another positive aspect of character, which is... Um, about best personal traits and characteristics. So when would you say that you're at your best and why? When are you in your, your zone, in your frame, in your place? Yeah, the place that you feel comfortable and you're good at what you're doing. What would you say is, is that place for you? For me, it's talking to other people and in turn motivating other people. Um, so when I'm when I talk to my friends or when I talk to random people, <laughs> don't drop the sheep <clears throat> on the out on the internet. Uh, that I that I have as Facebook friends, but I don't really know them in person. It doesn't really matter because um, when I'm in that situation, that's when I'm feeling. That's when I feel comfortable. Like um, we talked about Ines, right? I offered a lot of support. Um, to her, sorry, darling, you talking? Yeah. What's up? She's talking about the film. She's saying that she can see the film Mulan in the background. Oh, would you like to go and uh, watch it with Zora there? Oh, okay. Up. Don't Got forget it. your ice cream. Mm. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would, um, I would talk to her. You know, I would offer her support. Um, and that's that's these are the situations when I feel good, when I feel comfortable with myself. I know what I'm saying. I can, I can offer other people um, a little bit, a little bit of a removed point of view, you know, objective point of view. Um, and I can connect to them. I can rely to their problems, um, and I can offer some kind of support. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. <laughs> so, uh, as a result of understanding what you're good at and what, what you like, what would you say are your greatest achievements or accomplishments, personally? That's a very good question. Um, apart, apart from helping design that beautiful castle over there, which we built yesterday from, from cardboard and has served as a... Um, basically spaceship for the last what are my biggest hours. achievements i would say this is going to be extremely selfish yeah. and self-centered um but uh, well, you, have, my... you have to acknowledge what you're good at because if you don't then you are left with only one other path to follow uh, I'm not sure if this is uh, directly, directly related to what I was talking about before, but um, 
I would say my kids, our kids, I think our kids and the way they can handle problems and problem solve, the way they can uh, be empathetic towards others, you know, um, their, their emotional intelligence, their, you know, the, just I view that as partially um, our accomplishment. Um, because every time they get something right, you just feel that, you know, you're guiding them in the right direction. So, um, obviously, there's a lot of other people involved, by which I mean the kids themselves. <laughs> um, because their personality is, is a huge factor. Because it's not like, it's not like I've got this little piece of clay and I mold it in my, in my image, right? But, um... I think the fact that we can function peacefully, that we can communicate and we can solve problems together, I think that's... Yes, of course you can, help yourself. That's a big accomplishment that happens every single day. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, hmm, big accomplishments. I don't really feel that I've accomplished anything. <laughs> Just a terrible feeling. Um, mm -hmm. I have, I've gotten stronger, <laughs> which is a huge accomplishment for me, which again, doesn't relate to what I was talking about before. Um, but you know me, right? You know that I'm, have personal Cars, problems with staying consistent. A Porsche. Mm -hmm. And self-disciplined, therefore, getting fitter and getting stronger is a huge accomplishment for me. Because if you don't have a self-discipline and consistency, then <laughs> you don't do what you should to get better. Uh, but I'm getting there mm -hmm. Good job, Jesse. a little bit by little bit. So I view that as, a, as an accomplishment as well. Mm -hmm. And... And that's that's it. Also, you know, just if I, if I want to relate to what I was talking about before, then just having my friends, uh, having the circle of friends that I have that are motivational for me and that move me forward, mm -hmm. is an accomplishment as well for me because that means that not only means that they give something to me, but it means that I'm giving something to them, mm -hmm. and that's that's cool. That's good. Yeah, and obviously we all need people around about us to uh, to support support us, yeah. and that uh, that we can support as well. Because you know, once when I was when I was very young, I was nineteen, and I worked in this ice cream stand, right, in the summer. I had a summer job, and there was this girl, and she was seventeen, mm -hmm. and she was just finishing her mm -hmm. uh, her high school, mm -hmm. and she didn't want to go to college. She just wanted to go and, and, and work in McDonald's or something, right? Uh, and <laughs> well, if there ever was an end at the beginning, it's... it's yeah, yeah, I know. Because uh, she's like, oh, I can't be bothered. Uh, she's like, I can't be bothered. I don't want to learn anymore. Now, obviously, right now, I have a different uh, perspective on college. But back then, I was, you know, I bought into it. I was like, college is something that, that is really cool because you study, you'll get a paper, and then you'll be able to do something better right rather than just flipping burgers and we talked about it and we because we worked together we talked about it quite a lot and after about a week uh, she saw me studying because I wanted to get to the college where I where I go for to study languages I was I was in a different college back then and I didn't want to stay there and I was studying while selling ice cream <laughs> what were you originally studying I had biology and arts, okay. pedagogical faculty, okay. um, but I didn't want to be a teacher. <laughs> Can't imagine why not. It's a wonderful job. Oh God, I couldn't. I just couldn't teach kids. <laughs> Says the homeschooling mother of three. <laughs> and she told me after about a week. She said, "Oh, you you motivated me so much. You inspired me so much. I'm going to college now." You know, and she was like, I changed my decision. I decided that I want something more in life and I want to go to college. And uh, I don't know whether she did or not, but that was just a really good feeling, you know? It was like, 
Yeah, or it could have been that she's just led by anybody who's around about her to do it whatever it is that, that they do. It which... could be. Maybe she was just highly in, in, influenceable person, but that kind of, you know, that feeling was like, I gave, gave someone something positive. That is just, that mm -hmm. stuck with me. So I like giving people something positive. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, the, you can argue about the, the relativity of the positive nature. Yes, of that. yes. As I said, you know, I had a different opinion back then. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in that situation where she she wasn't she wasn't thinking about going and setting up a business and you know start <laughs> doing things like that. She was thinking about doing some horrible job, you know, nine to five mm -hmm. that she would just not be happy about. <laughs> Okay, super. Let's um, let's move on and look at limits. So, okay. Um, what qualities within other people do you do you not like, or can you not tolerate when you are with or around <coughs> other people? Um, that's a very good question. One of the things that I pick up instantly and don't like is thinking when somebody's thinking more of themselves, you know, when they're when they're up, when they're like looking down at you. And yeah, in an arrogant kind of way. Yes. Because right? obviously there's nothing wrong with thinking about yourself, basically. Right. In an arrogant kind of way, yes. Um that's what I don't like. Um, that's not that I don't like it. I just wouldn't come what close are, you mean to they, those they people. Think that they're, they think they're better than everybody else. Yes, basically. What if they are actually better than everybody else? And then you still, you can still be kind. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and it, you're not better. You're not. Nobody is in a situation when they are better than anybody else because you have so many things to be good at okay you can't be better than everybody else in everything mm -hmm. so realizing the, the relativity you know yeah, in the absolutely. situation um so You're realizing your own strengths and weaknesses yeah, yeah so that's one thing uh, another thing is just not lack of lack of intelligent conversation you know how you you know how it works in relationships, right? You you meet you meet someone you don't know them, and based on what they do and what they say, you decide whether you're going to meet them a bit more, right? Mm -hmm. So if 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 there's lack of intelligent conversation, if somebody's going to talk to me about the advertisements they've seen on the telly, I'm I'm just not going to meet that person again, even though they might be a really nice person. But if we don't have anything to talk about in common, then What's the point, right? <laughs> um, but we're talking about bad qualities, right? Like uh, like vices or something, no? Yeah? I don't know. Um, well, you... <laughs> obviously, of, we're going to define things we don't like as, as negative. Yeah, lack of, might not be. Lack, of, um, lack of interest for their own family, mm -hmm. okay? If, if I was meeting a person who who has... In not enough interest for their kids, for example, right? If, if I can see that a person is neglecting their kids, then uh, I wouldn't want to be around such person. Um, because I, not because I'm judging the person, but because I, I couldn't personally stand it emotionally, okay? It would hurt me emotionally to see that. Um, what else? That's well, quite an important realization, the way that people treat those people who are closest to them. Yeah, moral values. Moral values are quite important. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if somebody if somebody tells me that corruption is okay or stealing is okay, or um, you know, if 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 they if lying is okay or it's it's okay to manipulate, then I wouldn't want to be around those people either. Well. <laughs> Here's a complex one for you, okay. right? Let's just throw this in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, taxation is theft, right? 
It depends on the point of view looking at it. Taxation well, well, itself. Then, let's say taxation of individual people, where there is no uh, obvious, you know, need for 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 that element to exist, would be theft, right? I think that's a complex model question because if you look at it, um, you know, on the individual kind of point of view, then. <laughs> Then taking money from someone who doesn't consent, mm -hmm. or who, 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 yeah, doesn't doesn't consent, um, is morally a theft. Um, second, but 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 <laughs> uh, if you look at the system, right? Uh, if you look at it globally, then taking money from they're basically taking money from everybody who can theoretically afford it. Theoretically, okay, because they don't tax you under a certain tax bracket, right? Um, and then redistributing it into the services that need some funding should theoretically be okay. I don't think that it's the taxation that's the problem. It is the theft that is happening in the high places on everyday basis that is the problem. It's the corruption in the high places that is the problem because nobody up there who's handling the money is going to give everything back. There, there are going to be there are going to be problems. There are going to be people who want to give business to their friends and okay, to their Jeff, family. Don't worry about it. There are going to be people who, who want to keep some of their money themselves. So they're going to come up with different schemes and non-government organizations and, and things to filter the money just to get some more for themselves. And that is that is a problem because that is a is a theft. Okay. Um I think that. What's happening? The banging the doors as loud as they can for some yeah. reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's about that's about it, really. I mean, you could argue, you know, you could argue like if you don't want to get taxed by this government, you can move out of the country. But there's not really any other government that's not going to tax you, so unless you go to Madeira or some other tax paradise country, right? Oh uh, yeah. The British Virgin Islands, or you, you can yeah. go to Wikipedia and look at the tax rates in different countries. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> choose a country that has a lower. Choose, choose the lesser evil. Yeah, yeah, basically, that uh, that appears so, to be. There's your there's your choice. Actually, you have a choice. You can either pay the tax or not pay the tax. Your only problem you is that if you don't, the then you go to the prison. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not really much. Of it's a not problem. really a choice, is it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, are there any, um, no, I'll change, I'll change the question. Hmm. Um, oh, yeah, okay, let's, let's flip it around a bit, right? Uh, so we, we talked a little bit there about laws and, and rules, yeah? Okay. So <clears throat> are there any rules that you've come across that you don't agree with in life? Rules either made by people or organizations or things that you said, I don't like that idea very much. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather not live that way. Rules. Yeah, rules. Yeah, uh, laws. Or, or it could be laws set by society. Yeah, of course, of course. See, vaccination, right? Okay. We have the vaccination where the state says that everybody has to vaccinate their child, which is morally wrong mm -hmm. because nobody can force you to do any medical procedures. It's like, it's like living in a Nazi Germany concentration camp or doing medical freaking um, experiments on people, right? I'm, I'm not saying that vaccination is a medical experiment, even though there are people who think that. I don't have an opinion on that. But well, um, the, uh, just, to, just to make a small point, it is actually an experiment because they don't exactly know what's going to happen in the future. Therefore, that categorizes true. it as an experiment. But the point is, it's morally wrong to force someone to do anything with their body it's like forcing you to to uh to pierce your ears or you know or forcing you to take whatever other kind of medicine um like forcing, it's like forcing you to have plastic surgery or yeah something. exactly they they nobody has the right to force anyone to undergo any medical procedure it's just wrong um so that's something that i don't want to abide by 
uh, other law, other law. Yeah, I don't agree with the fact that all all children should be tested um, to see if you as a parent are doing a good job, which basically is what school tests are, right? If you decide to uh, homeschool your children in Slovakia, they have to go and pass tests. Um, now, on one hand, um, tests can be positive and they can give you a good image of you know, what the kid knows, what the kid doesn't know. And if the test is done in a, in a good way, if it's a good test, right, if it's positive, if, if it's presented as a positive thing, like why don't you test yourself and see what you can do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, not, not to judge you, but to um, give you some kind of inspiration of what else you can study uh, or what else is out there that you don't know. Um, What's up, Jazzy? One second. Mm -hmm. You okay over there, Jazzy? Oh, she's going to read it for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's just funny. The girl said, sort of reading a letter to Jasmine that she wrote for her. Um, yeah, so um, I think that tests should, should be there for parents if they want them, for homeschooling parents if they want them, but they shouldn't be forcing them to into them. What's up? Want to close this chair. Uh, close the want, door. You want to stay in here with us? Would you like me to pick you okay. up, sweetie? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going to pick her up. She's, mm -hmm. she's no. asking for you. <coughs> Sorry. There we go. Oh. Oh, she's showing the uh, up. Okay. She's showing the poster. Can I have a look? You know, oh. Oh, it's got the special. Oh. It's got the special sister's writing on it. There we go. There we go. Uh, holding it up. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Well done. It's very kind of you to share that with us. Oh, you want to stay up? What? Um, oh, you want this? The uh, what are they called? Take it with you. Windmill. I don't windmills, know. The, the, um, the little toy windmills. Okay. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you again. Bless you again. Absolutely. Um. <coughs> so, um, another rule that's a Slovak rule is uh, that's just the way it is. Oh, it's like a, like a cultural <laughs> habit. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. It's like there's a problem. There's a massive, huge corruption case in the government, right? Where a person steals millions of euros. And Slovaks are getting a. Oh, well, it's just the way it is, isn't it? It's just well, what it's people in the government do. Because well, it's, it's a nation built on theft, basically. Yeah. So. Because that, that's how everything was. That's how everything worked in socialism, and that's how everything still works now. Because everything was uh, changed. The only people that had stuff were the people who took it. From, who stole it? Yeah, stole it because other everybody people. else just had exactly the same amount as anybody else. Yeah, they still mm -hmm. haven't recovered from that, obviously. Yeah. And it's going to and take a long it's national cultural time. thing. It's like stealing is great. People are going to brag about what they stole. They do constantly. Yeah, absolutely. Like you, oh. hear, you, you can't go anywhere without hearing somebody bragging about something that they ripped off of somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's so insane. deeply ingrained in, in Oh, no, now it's super cold, sweetie. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it might even snow. We'll go outside when we're finished here, okay? I'll take you outside. We're, we're going to take Zora to swim. Dun, dun, okay? Dun. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, moving on mm -hmm. to another question. Um, is there anything that you have tried or have done what you thought was unsuccessful or which you thought that maybe you could have done better with it? Yes. Constantly. Everything. <laughs> Everything. Breakfast, Everything. lunch, dinner. Seriously. No, sometimes, the sometimes lunch is fine. No, yeah, I, I, I very often have, have um, feelings that I could have done better <laughs> about everything. Um, which is probably true. I probably could have done better. 
Um, but it, but it, in one sense, everything can be done better. So it's not it's not always unnatural, and it's not always bad. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> She says, laughing, laughing at herself. I'm not <laughs> laughing at Will. Oh, is he doing his... Um... I think so, that you can't see him because he hides before you can look because he doesn't want to disturb you. He's just staring at me. <laughs> so he's, he's realized that he can't do it in front of me because yeah. he suffers the, the wrath of Ken. He's behind yeah. the pillar over there and he's trying to tell me something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Will, Will, if I see you, you're a dead man, okay? <laughs> Between well, you and me. If you need something, it's come here good. and talk to me, okay? Ask me a question because I if don't know. If it's absolutely you're... essential and extremely important, you've got 30 seconds. Quickly, because uh, we don't want to bore the people on. No, okay, good, good, then disappear. Then it can wait for a half an hour. Yes. There we go. Get it done. Yeah. What was the question? Um, <laughs> what did I F up? <laughs> FUP, yes. Yes, your fops. Uh, no, um, there's things that you wish that you had had done better, or things. Everything, that you everything. I wish I had studied harder when I was at school. I wish I. I well, wish what I would that have? More... What would that have changed? It's not just the studying. It's more about. I wish I was more involved in the community in the in the university com- community. You know, I was I was very much involved in the community with my friends that were partying and drinking all the time, but I wasn't involved at all in the in the university community, you know, so I didn't get I mean it was a great opportunity to get great contacts for business, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, to start doing business while studying, you know, mm-hmm. I could have had much more professional experience. Uh, I could have built much better network uh, business-wise, but nothing like that happened because I just, whatever, I just didn't care back then at all. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that I, I could have done that. So um, that would be like a lost opportunity. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what else? I could have started working sooner than I have. <laughs> I could have. Um, what else could I have done better? I could have started writing a book when I was 18. <laughs> I mean, there's so many things that I could have done if, if only, if only um, I haven't been so passive. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, well, in terms of then uh, having these, <clears throat> these regrets, are there any times when you feel that you, 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 you took the wrong path or, or the wrong road with certain things and then learned at some point that uh, it wasn't perhaps the best way and they needed to change it because maybe you you changed or maybe your values changed or maybe people around about you changed I've, I've had that with parenting and I told you that before right uh, when I took the wrong path and, and then kind of moved backwards uh, but with parenting you can't really undo what you've done right mm-hmm. it stays there somewhere um, and I, I can see that every day okay. stays, stays it stays in the flat. brain it stays you whether you like it or you don't like it you are conditioning the brain of your child constantly ever since they're the newborn the first year is absolutely if essential right um, and well, even before they're born. I think yeah, sometimes. even before they're born. But <laughs> before they're born, you don't um, you don't fulfill their needs uh, based on their demand. Okay, you 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 your blood flows into the baby constantly, right? You eat, they eat. Um, so it's basically fulfilling your own needs. Okay, <laughs> but uh, when they're born. I wish I, I wish I was have been uh, wiser when it came to parenting. I wish I, I wish I had known about attachment parenting more, uh, and I wish I have done it ever since the beginning. Ever since Will was a little baby, uh, I wish I had his m- mouth examined. Okay, because later. You know, with time, we had a problem with breastfeeding. Later with time, I uh, realized that he might have had some kind of physical problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's like the tongue tie that needs to be cut or whatever, Mm -hmm. and the baby can't feed. Uh, Anyway, I'm changing the topic. Sorry. I 
I went the wrong direction for the first year and a half of Will's life, okay? And you, can, you can't really bring it back. I mean, you can change it now, okay? And you can still have a lot of positive inter interaction now. You can do peaceful parenting now, but the first year is there. I mean, in the, in the way he's afraid of new situations, in the way that he's careful, in the way that he's not as self-confident as, as he think that he could be, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that's all um, based on the information he received when he was little and had no idea that he's receiving that information. Okay. <clears throat> so by doing the, you know, I'd, I'd let him cry things out sometimes in the bed and his cold. He would sleep in the cold by himself. He wouldn't sleep with us. Mm -hmm. Uh, and just generally, it wasn't attachment parenting, okay? I wasn't neglecting him, okay? I was, I was still responding to his needs, but not as much as I wish I had. You know, I'd, I'd left him with other people at various points of time, like, you know, his baby sat for a half, a half a day when I went interpreting. And I wouldn't do that now. I mean, it's just a few hours, but I wouldn't do that now. <laughs> not at that age, no, not at like two months old. It's not, it's just, I wouldn't, <laughs> I would take him with me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's, that's where I took the wrong path and I had to go back. I had to retrace my steps. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, um, it's really important to acknowledge those, uh, those personal changes and those personal developments. And it's very hard to acknowledge that sometimes, sometimes no, as well. It is, it is hard to acknowledge that you made a mistake, especially when it comes to, the, uh, to bringing up your kids because you want to do the best for them, right? And to be able to admit that you actually effed something up, uh, something they might not, <laughs> you might not be able to repair very easily. That's, um, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can't really repair kids. Can you? <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. You mm -hmm. gave them a certain information at a certain point in time, mm -hmm. and the information stays there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can mm -hmm. you can give. What you can do is you can give them additional information. Mm -hmm. You can give them lots of additional positive information, but you can't erase. No. Yes? Hello? 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 What happened? I don't okay. know. Oh, would you like a cuddle? Do you need she, help? She got a card from... Uh, Are you stuck? She can get out of that. Look at that. <laughs> Ooh, but, um, Houdini. She is. Um, she got a card from her sister, and then okay. she was angry that her sister gave her a card. <laughs> for some reason. No, I don't want to understand. Raisins. raisins. Well, if you wait a couple of minutes, then you can have as many raisins as you want. Where did you put those raisins that you had? Well, the ones I had in my hand. Yeah. Did you eat them? I ate them. <laughs> what do you think I did with the them? The ones he had in the bowl. I didn't the take the bowl. bowl. The bowl's still there. Where? In the kitchen. <laughs> the bowl's still there in the kitchen. Go see, if, go see if we can find a yellow bowl in the kitchen. If you can't, so will. It's near the bread where the bread is. Was whatever. Something like that. Yeah. Mm. Okay, um, on to more positive uh, topics. Um, what is it that makes you feel good in your life? What is it that, that makes you feel positive uh, in, your, in your experiences? When I achieve something, <laughs> when, I, when I do action, Right? Mm -hmm. When I do something and there's a result, then that makes me feel good and motivated to do more and have more result. So, and by achieve, I mean any, anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> when it comes to career, when it comes to um, personal development or kids development or you know kids school or anything that's that's what motivates me when I see some kind of a result it's just like hey good uh -huh. so um how do you know that the, the 
the result is something that's good for you or positive. I mean, what, what, what is this? Uh, what, what is it like to go through that? How do I know that something's positive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, <laughs> know that. The, <laughs> what is it? Well, you have a goal, for? right? Mm -hmm. You have a certain kind of goal, and and if you get closer to that goal then that makes you feel positive like uh say organization okay mm -hmm. um you know me <laughs> and our organization don't go together very well but uh <laughs> if i really manage say that. <laughs> if i manage to get some kind of a system going somewhere mm -hmm. even if it's just a tiny little step it makes me feel good because because it's an achievement okay mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I have I have a lot of setbacks, obviously, where I where I set up something and then I go back, and and don't use it, and that's why I have to take very little steps. Like having one shopping checklist is a is a huge achievement for me. Mm -hmm. um, Are you able to keep to the checklist once you make it? Yeah. Yes, uh, but I can't overdo it. Okay, I have to I have to have simple checklists in situations where I need them because I have tried to make different kinds of checklists before and I just didn't use them because I guess my need for them wasn't as big as, as I thought. So if I have like a shopping che checklist to make sure that we have everything, that I didn't forget to put anything on the shopping list. Um, another checklist that I didn't write down yet actually, but it's in my head and it's gonna go on the paper. <laughs> She can't hold on to that, you know uh -huh. that. Cause, uh, it's a leaving checklist, anymore. you know, what to check before I leave house. <laughs> okay. And why is, why is it so difficult to create that? It's not difficult to create it. It's just, uh, it's one of the thousand little things on the list of things to do. And every time you find something that's more, that's more important, you know, it's just not on the top of my priority list. Mm -hmm. So... You know that... You know, you know. Neurolinguistically, you know is an attempt to persuade the other person of something you don't believe yourself. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> anyway. I mean, I go through the day. 99% of the time. I go through the day. There you go. And doing things. And other things popping up that I consider extremely important, right? Like, I go wash the dishes, but in the middle of that, I see laundry, and I start doing that. And in the middle of that, I see... <laughs> okay, sweetie. I see a dry flower or plant, so I go to water it, because it seems more important than the laundry, which seemed more important than the dishes, and you just get... <laughs> Priorities. It's just crazy. Not and finishing like... what you start. Yeah, I know. But that's just because the other thing seems more pressing at the time. And... That's how it happens that things just don't make it to the daily to-do list, uh -huh. like writing a checklist. Or I sit down at the computer going to write it, and then I see an email from a translation agency offering me a job, and there you go. Okay, my checklist is not important right now. I have to do this. So, yeah, Priorities and getting things done is always complex part of the, the the human condition yeah I mean I'm always trapped in this there's only 24 hours in a day yeah right that there's no way that you can do everything exactly there are <laughs> there are there are some things that you can do and I I, I notice that um, I'm at the moment I'm on about one task an hour mm -hmm. And I, I know that might sound like not a lot, but of course it depends on like whether that, that task is, uh, yeah, there's a difference between brushing your teeth and uh, answering emails to your clients, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously one that takes longer, but in, in general, if I, get, if, if I get what I want to get done in the hour, done in the hour, that's a major achievement. And I think that there's only about, five or six productive hours that people can have during the day mm -hmm. and um, if I get five or six major tasks done that's good in, in, in a day that's that's a successful step in, in the right direction yeah yeah that's good yeah um, yeah my my problem explains why sometimes you have to tell me to do something twice because the first time it's just not of a big priority 
but uh, the second time you tell me about it, slightly pissed off, <laughs> it suddenly becomes a priority, right? Mm -hmm. So it gets done because if I was to make the checklist mm -hmm. now, if I made a point of it, sit down at the computer, type it down, um, or even just write it down with, with a pen on a piece of paper, it would be done in two minutes, right? <laughs> the checklist? Yes. Well, yeah, it's easy. doing the checklist is easy. I mean, I yeah, I mean, you know, but five minutes to do a checklist. it has never, ever been a priority of such a high priority <laughs> that I would make a point of sitting down and doing it. Oh, I'm but probably no, going to I mean, do that after I mean, this. financial priorities are pretty high. Yeah. Right? So there are... You know, there are payments to be done on certain days that can't wait until other times. And this reminds me. With uh, <laughs> there you go. Which is why I'm going to town tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So um, there are all these. Um, there, there, there are definitely some things which are more important than other things, and, and also some things which create freedom to do other things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, although I still think it's really hard to specifically prioritize what is what, what is essential for people well i guess everybody's is uh solving the same problems everybody's fighting the same fight really whether it's prioritizing family over work or, or whatever else you're prioritizing so you know mm -hmm. young moms are prioritizing all the time you know prioritizing baby over the household <laughs> Mm -hmm. Things like that. Um, you're, you're, ja, 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 Jazzy, you asked, you asked me to carry it. Darn. Carry it like this? Oh, no? How did you do that? Would you like it back? Can I give it to you? No. <laughs> Can I put it on the table here? here? Okay, right, okay. We'll do a 30 second um, conclusion yeah. and then I'll finish up and you can get the reasons. Okay, well, let's just say bye-bye. For the little girl. Okay. Can you say bye-bye to, the, to the people? All right. That's it, that's great. Say thank you for watching. Can you say that? Yeah, that's you just it. Play with the just say thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. <laughs> yes. Okay, so questions like the questions that we've explored, things about inspiration, when you're at your best, what you admire in other people, your personal accomplishments, qualities that you can, can qualities that you can uh, tolerate in other people, qualities that you can't tolerate in other people, rules that are hard to follow, you know what what um, what makes you feel fulfilled personally. These are all parts of what is important to you, and your. These are all parts of. You're you, trying you, to grab my mic. Yeah, well, that's 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 no no. Okay, it's absolutely no. no. I know. Okay. Let's stop. So all of these, all of these, help us answer who we are, where we are, and why we do what we do, and I think they should be explored by everybody. Isn't that right? They should be explored by everybody. So, um, talking about exploring, I think you should go and explore the kitchen. Yes, we're going to explore the raisins. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you later. Mm -hmm. And I'll do a little, do a little conclusion mm -hmm. for the people who are out, who are out there. And you can deal with the chaos that happens as a result of the madness that is what it is. All right. If you'd like more information about what we do, it is the Academy of Language Therapy and Life Coaching on. Line. Yanka's website is what is it? Twenty first century mom.com. And you can check out the videos on our YouTube channel. Over one thousand one hundred videos on <laughs> uh, mother is playing beanstalk over there. Um, you can check out the videos we have online. You can uh, join in the chat on Facebook. If you're interested in languages, you can pick up my daily English language masterclass. And uh, you can scroll through my Facebook page and see all the free stuff that we put out, uh, all the free stuff that's available. And we have a whole series of interviews that are coming for you people out there, interviews with parents about their parenting experience and a lot of tricks and tips that you can use, hopefully, in your daily life to, um, to just help your own personal development, help your family's development, help your 
help your children's development, to help you in your personal communication with other people. And um, we'd like to share what we've learned and we'd like to learn what you can share with us as well at the same time. So thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, this is Gian Yanka saying, we wish you a fantastic day wherever you are and uh, stay positive and peaceful with your parenting. So take it easy, guys. <laughs>